Let's talk about that, Luke. Jump, get get us up to speed. GitHub Copilot. Well, I, yeah, I don't know how this this passed by me, but I didn't know about it until now. Um, oh, really? Someone asked. Someone asked in Floatplane Chat, "Are you guys going to talk about GitHub Copilot?" And I was like, "Copilot? I haven't heard of this." And I looked it up, and my brain was immediately blown. Um, the fact that it's powered by OpenAI just totally makes sense and gives me a lot more confidence in it than other similar ideas that have been talked about slash announced slash done in the past and have always had some form of issue. This is crazy. So why don't you talk um, I, about what it's supposed to do and then I can talk about some of the controversy around it already. Oh, I'm sure there's lots. Um, and I'm sure it's not going to matter because I'm sure it's going to happen anyways. So GitHub Copilot, it, it is supposed to suggest uh, whole lines or entire functions of code. And if you see their example, I don't know if you're showing this on screen or not, uh, they're, they're typing the first line of a, of a function and it's, it's auto-completing the rest of it. Like, crazy. Um, not, the examples that they're giving aren't necessarily all that out of this world. Um, but even like it's just just it's just the general concept of something that helps you develop by suggesting things and giving a guiding hand has been needed for a long time and will absolutely be something that's used. Yes, on the extreme end of programming, a lot of very seasoned programmers aren't going to want or likely won't use something like this unless they can find a way for it to be very very lightweight and out of their way so they can use it just as a speed increase so they don't have to type certain things. That's like pretty much probably the only way it's gonna be used on the really high end. What this is going to be groundbreaking for is new programmers. Mm -hmm. Going to be huge. People that wanna develop some little home automation thing for fun that they can do at home. People that wanna learn some basics um, and can start, you know, known enough to be dangerous but can't really get a ton of things done. Um, is going to be massive. And the further this goes forward, the lower the lower the barrier of entry into development is going to be, and the easier it's going to be for individuals to develop their own things without being a seasoned professional, which is massive, super, super big deal. And I'm sure we're just seeing like the beginning splashes of, of what this can do, considering it's powered by OpenAI. We're going to see this grow and become stronger over time. All right, Go now let's talk about some of the uh, controversy around it. As with any kind of machine learning or AI tool, uh, Copilot has to have some kind of data set that it's yeah. trained on. <laughs> how uh. exactly would it know <laughs> how to complete that line uh, if it didn't have some examples of code that had been written in the past? Now, because this is coming from GitHub, I think you guys see where I'm going with this, the potential for GitHub to just scrape all of the code submitted to the entire platform and then use it to train their AI is very high. And that creates a number of problems. I mean, one problem is that the quality of the code could be sketchy at best. It might not be the most optimized code that it suggests for your autocomplete. And number two is that the licensing for code doesn't really have any provision for this one way or the other to my understanding. So without a developer's express consent, GitHub might be training their AI based on their code, which in and of itself is not necessarily plagiarism, but then if it goes and suggests that exact snippet to another developer, are they then, as this middleman, causing one developer to plagiarize the code of another without even yeah. knowing it? Yeah. Whoa. A bit so, crazy. A so bit here's crazy. something. And, and... Oh, hold on. I just want to talk about this uh, Kyle... Yeah. Kyle, who posted, congrats at David Sellis. You get a shout out if GitHub Copilot tries to generate an about me page. Look at this, about me. I'm a software engineer from the Bay Area, currently working at Salesforce. I love to learn new things and build things. 
I have I have a GitHub account. That's accept solution. That's auto generated. Like that was clearly pulled straight off of David's website. As uh, as as Jaden says, it, it it says in quotes, trained on billions of lines of public code, um, like directly on the landing page. So so yeah, that that is that is exactly what's happening. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. You you can literally have it like if if you get into some of these examples that they have, you you can write comments, and it'll write the whole thing for you. It'll try at least. Yeah, write a comment describing the logic you want and let GitHub Copilot assemble the code for you. Is it going to be exactly what you want? Is it going to be efficient? Is it going to be whatever else? I don't know. But the fact that it's even going to try is wild. Um, like, what do schools do? Uh, I don't know. Because it's probably because of how... Um, OpenAI works, it's probably not going to be the same every time. So you're not going to be yeah. able to, maybe you can. Like but train it, people to use Copilot or what? Like, I don't know. What I mean is like, how do you verify that Copilot just didn't write an entire student's assignment? I don't like, know. That's, that's difficult because they could write a description, for example. They, sh they could write a comment that describes what they want the code block to do. Yeah have the code block get generated and then change the comment. So yeah. you don't know what led to the generation of that code. Like, ugh, that's a difficult problem for uh... Altonian Wolf in Twitch chat says it's going to lead to the replication of bugs across different software packages. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I think that's going to be <laughs> a broad planes instant CS major degree speed run. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That would be a really, you know what? That would be really interesting. If like a, if like a university teacher gave this thing homework yeah, and saw how well it scored, like on multiple levels of, uh, of courses, that would be really interesting. I'll be interested to see how this is going to shake out. I'll be interested to see how the legal challenges to, um, I guess, well, Microsoft's use of this code um ends up shaking out but regardless of what happens this is going to have an immense impact on the world and like i i honestly like i'm not i don't think i'm sugarcoating that this is massive yeah like the so much of the future is software development and programming and coding we talked about on the wan show a long time ago how you should probably teach your kids to code regardless of what they want to do in the future they should probably understand to a certain degree some amount of software development um and this is massive because of all of that this is just absolutely huge and it's just going to get better and it's just going to grow because there's whatever legal problems they have i can pretty much guarantee you they're going to make it through it because this yeah. is crazy That's and Microsoft. this is this They'll is going to happen go away with money yep Yep, that's like fair. this. This is nuts. Yeah.